Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. On Thursday the 4th of July 2024, in the early AM hours, a grisly discovery was made in the municipality of Melchor Ocampo in Mexico State. At the site, severed hands, feet and genitals were found, along with a yellow cardboard banner with a warning written on it. As of right now, the remaining body parts have not been found. The note read the following, We already told you that your house is our house. Here, we will not protect the artists, kidnappers and rats, and least of all, allow child endangerments. We usually do not publish videos like this. Here, we will eliminate anyone in our house failing to follow rules. Those who are extorting citizens with protection from the government, your days are counted here, and you will not get another chance. This goes out to those wannabe thugs. Start doing things right and respect the townspeople and let the government do their job. Sincerely, you already know who. The problem is, we don't already know who was responsible. It's certainly a cartel-related murder, seemingly fueled by mob justice, but as to which cartel was responsible is unknown. The body parts were found after the release of a grisly video online that depicted the execution of a captive by unknown assailants, and due to its graphic nature, as well as its subject matter, the video went somewhat viral in particular on X, formerly known as Twitter. The man killed in the video was accused of an utterly horrific crime, and should those accusations be true, then I think it's fair to say that most of us won't have any sympathy for him, to put it lightly. However, one thing we must remain aware of is the fact that drug cartels, no matter the size or influence, all engage in propaganda, some more sophisticated than others. It is possible that the accusations were false in order to paint a certain narrative to almost excuse the murder, as well as to potentially portray the enemy as more than mere drug traffickers. The captive in the video does admit to the alleged crimes, however, again, after watching countless videos of this type, people can say strange things in order to stay alive. I'm not saying the captive is guilty or innocent, ultimately, we don't know, and to report the alleged crime as fact would be lazy, dishonest, and potentially playing into the hands of drug cartel propaganda. Mexico State, home to the capital of Mexico, Mexico City, for the most part has been a state that has been relatively safe and unaffected by cartel activity. Of course, cartels do have presence in the area. Gangs such as CJNG, La Nueva Familia Michoacana, Cartel de Sinaloa, Los Viagras, and La Union Tapito all seem to operate in the state, with La Union Tapito being a cartel local to the area. La Union Tapito in particular have been one of the main violence generators in the state, and they view the Sinaloa cartel, La Familia, and CJNG as enemies who are looking to take control of their turf in Mexico City. More than likely, one of the latter mentioned cartels were responsible for the murder, though it is possible that it may have been perpetrated by a smaller street gang. But nevertheless... What happens in the actual video? The video itself is exactly 42 seconds in length, and it is shot during the dead of night, possibly in a rural village. As you play the video, you are immediately met with the sight of the victim, who has been stripped naked. He has had his eyes blindfolded with duct tape, and the victim is sweating profusely, more than likely due to fear. A Sicario is holding the captive by the hair, ensuring that his face looks at the camera. He is forced to confess the alleged crimes, and the captive simply states the following. My name is Luis Miguel, aka El Machito. This happened to me for my daughter and two other children. As he confesses, you hear the shakiness in his voice, and the fear is palpable. After the brief confession, the Sicario holding the victim's hair then immediately takes a razor-sharp machete that he is holding in the other hand, and he begins to cut the victim's throat. He lets out a horrific pain-induced growl as he is slowly pushed to the ground. When he hits the ground, he lets out one final piercing screech 
that echoes through the night sky. Once the victim hits the ground, the Sicario uses his hand to cover the victim's mouth and he soars back and forth with the machete against the throat. The blade is cutting through the flesh incredibly quickly and you audibly hear the blood squirt out and drip on the floor. The sounds of the machete cutting through flesh are hard to explain, but it sounds like you hear the flesh tear in real time. And when the machete blade reaches the spinal cord, you hear soaring and grinding sounds. It's like nails down a chalkboard. The sound is awful. After about 10 seconds, a huge pool of blood has collected on the ground, and the Sicario then cuts through the spinal cord. At this point, the skin on the back of the neck is the only thing holding the victim's head onto his body. The Sicario pulls the head so that the skin stretches, and he then cuts through it with the machete. The decapitation is then complete. The killer holds the head up briefly, and blood drips onto the victim's corpse. He then gently places the victim's head next to the corpse before the video then ends. After the man was beheaded, he was then dismembered. His hands and feet were cut off, as were his genitals. The hands and feet and genitals were left next to a narco banner discovered on the 4th of July 2024, as mentioned. The rest of his body has not been found, and the police are currently investigating the murder. This wasn't the only cartel video released in recent days, however. Another also made the rounds on the 9th of July. The video was seemingly recorded in Tabasco State. The situation in Tabasco has been one of the developing stories in the narco landscape, as historically, the state has managed to largely avoid cartel violence. However, since May of last year, organized crime-linked homicides are up 400%, and this is largely due to the arrival of Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, CJNG, in the state. Cartel Jalisco's arrival has been described by some as a hostile takeover, and local residents have seen buses torched, businesses fold under pressure from extortion, and as many as 80 organized crime-linked homicides in a single month, according to Vilantia Intelligence, a consulting firm monitoring violence and criminality in the country. Only a few days ago, three human heads and a narco mantle warning from CJNG to its remaining rivals were left outside a kindergarten of all places in Macuspana, the municipality that includes outgoing Mexican president Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador's hometown. Tabasco's geographic position is critical. It borders the Gulf of Mexico as well as the country of Guatemala and is near the states of Veracruz and Chiapas which are known for significant drug trafficking and people trafficking activities. This makes it an attractive route for cartels moving drugs and people from South America to the United States. Tabasco is also rich in oil resources, and the presence of the oil industry provides opportunities for cartels to engage in fuel theft, extortion, and other illegal activities related to the sector. In a short space of time, Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion have managed to muscle their way into the state, but they have been met with resistance. Primarily, they have been warring with a local group known as La Baradora, known in English as the Sweepers. Cartel Jalisco have released several graphic videos of Sicarios slaughtering members of La Baradora to essentially paint a certain narrative, a narrative that Cartel Jalisco are dominating La Baradora and are wiping them out. However, this isn't the case. La Baradora, despite their relatively small size, are in bed with local law enforcement and even the local prison system. This has made it hard for CJNG to completely wipe them out and render them as irrelevant. La Baradora are believed to be made up of remnants of Los Etas as well as the Beltran Labour Organization. Due to their protection from law enforcement, they have been free to commit horrific crimes against local populations, with extortion and kidnap being two of their main money generators. Ultimately, a cartel like La Baradora are only as powerful as corruption allows them to be. If they ever lose the support of local law enforcement, they will without doubt be destroyed by CJNG, but as of right now, they have proved to be a thorn in the side of the Jalisco-based crime crew. Cartel Jalisco's incursion into the state has been utterly brutal. 
and they have followed the playbook that they have used since their creation. Sometimes, cartels, when attempting to acquire new territory, lead with subversion and corruption. But with CJNG, similar to the Zetas, they lead with bullets and violence, and that strategy has been largely successful and a pivotal reason for their exponential growth in recent years. They have flooded the internet with a myriad of graphic execution videos, from the macabre to the downright sadistic, garnering themselves the reputation of being the most violent drug cartel around, a reputation that they wear with pride, as without doubt, it strikes fear into their enemies' hearts, as well as law enforcement and the general population. Imagine contending with a hostile force, where if you're lucky, you will get a quick end and a bullet to the head, but if you're really unlucky, you may be subjected to one of their infamous torture sessions, have your skin ripped from your body, your organs removed, and your limbs severed, all whilst you are still alive. The reason that cartels and especially CJNG perpetrate these videos is obvious and clear. To keep others in line, but also to keep their own members in line. When working for a cartel such as CJNG, you are not only at risk of being killed by rivals, but also by your own employers. Those who step out of line will be swiftly dealt with in a violent manner, whether you be a traitor or a snitch. Even those who fail to do their job correctly are also at risk of facing severe punishment. This could be as simple as a beating, or a humiliating punishment known as paddling, or even death. A video recorded in Tabasco State made the rounds on the 9th of July 2024, and the victim was allegedly a traitor, and seemingly the video was recorded by CJNG. The video itself is a short one, at just 36 seconds in length, and it has been shot during daytime hours in a forest type location. As you play the clip, you are met with the sight of a captive, kneeling on the ground with his hands tied behind his back. He is shirtless, and he's had his eyes blindfolded by duct tape. Standing menacingly over him, you see a Sicario who is lifting the victim's head up by the hair, and he is carrying a machete. The hitman has concealed his identity with a face mask, and he is wearing an Under Armour tracksuit with an Oakley t-shirt. It may be my imagination, but looking at the Sicario's eyes, he seems very familiar, like I've seen him before in another execution video, though I may be totally wrong. Like is the case with many cartel videos, the victim is forced to read out a statement which goes as follows. He simply states, this happened to me for betraying the boss of Makuspana. The boss of Makuspana seems to be a man who goes by the alias of Comandante88. Very little information exists of him online. The Sicario then reads out a statement of his own, which goes as follows. This is going to happen to all of those motherfucking traitors. Makuspana is ours. This happens for betraying our boss of Makuspana. After the statement has been read out by the Sicario, he then takes the machete, and, as you would expect, he begins to cut the captive's throat in a savage manner. As soon as the blade touches skin, you see the victim's face contort into a horrible grimace, but he doesn't scream once. He just grits his teeth, and the blade cuts through his skin and through his windpipe. Immediately, you hear droplets of blood hit the leafy ground, it's so audible, it sounds like rainfall. After a couple of seconds, the man's throat has been cut open. The Sicario then tightly grips the victim's hair, and he places his knee into the victim's back, essentially opening up the victim's slashed throat. He then takes the machete and hits the blade into the man's slashed open throat. The chiming sound of blade hitting bone literally echoes through the forest, and the meaty wet thuds are horrible to listen to. It's clear by watching this that this isn't the Hitman's first time at the rodeo. He's clearly done this before, more than likely several times. He is ruthlessly efficient. It's utterly grim. After a few strikes, you hear the moment where the spinal cord severs, and you see it happen visually. The man's neck no longer supports his head, and his body goes limp. While still holding onto the victim's hair, the Sicario then cuts through the remaining flesh, and he completes the beheading. 
It's done in about 13 seconds, from beginning to end. The video is one of the quickest cartel beheadings I've seen, though it's extremely bloody. The Sicario holds the head up to the camera before he places it on the ground. He then stabs the machete into the ground next to the head, before the person filming then walks over to the corpse, filming it one last time. The leafy ground is completely covered in blood, and the clip ends there. Not much else is known about the video, or what the victim actually did. The format for this video was slightly different, it was more of an update covering recent cartel news, cutting right to the chase, so to speak. In regards to the first video covered, due to the allegations attached to the clip, it is certainly hard to stay neutral. However, again, we have to remind ourselves that cartel propaganda is a very real thing, and I felt it necessary to add the caveat when talking about that specific case. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. Apologies for it being slightly shorter. It's been a very busy week. Time seems to be finite right now, so um, yeah, apologies for that. But yeah, hopefully next week we are back with a longer video. Also, my links to my social media in the pinned comment below, my Twitter, my Twitch, etc. So if you're so kind, please check those out. Much appreciated. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.